I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. We gather this morning to celebrate the life, the legacy, and the homegoing of Brother Joe We thank God for that life. And we thank God for each and every one of you who has come today to share in the celebration his elevation from earth to glory. Certainly we continue to pray for his family, for his dear wife Mary, and for all of the members of the family. We're going to ask this time that the Gatlin staff would come. They would prepare us for worship and make their presentation. We're going to worship God in spirit and in truth said earlier, we had some challenges, but we're going to work through them. We know that God we serve is able. I have gotten to the point in life where I stop complaining about what's not working. I did work with whatever it is you had. Amen. Amen. And so I am grateful to God today for each of you. We're praying for the strength of this family. I want to ask you to uh, hear to lift this family up in prayer that God uh, will give them the strength to sustain them uh, through these moments that we will share together. Uh, those who are on the program for uh, reflections or we're going to make reflections, I'm going to call and ask uh, at the appropriate time to invite you to this podium and say we're really limited this morning in how many microphones we have but we're going to invite you to this podium uh, to give your remarks. Again, I do want you to know how to share it with the family, but I want everyone to know that we are recording this service, uh, video recording, and this afternoon it will be up on the Radio First Baptist Church YouTube page. That's for your relatives and friends who may be out of town and make these services you know, make them available uh, for them to watch. God bless each other. Giving the praise to Almighty God who's headed my life. Pastor Love, other ministers that may be present, to your relatives and friends, but especially to this bereaved family. We the gathered family would like to say to you today to hold on to God's unchanging hand. We encourage you today to look to the hills from what's coming to your help. For surely all of our help comes from the Lord. To show you our appreciation for allowing us to serve you on today, we would like to present you the greatest book that's ever been written, printed or published, The Roadmap to Salvation, The Word of God, The Holy Bible. May God forever bless and keep each of you. You're back in the hands of Pastor Love. God bless you. Thank the Gatlin staff, certainly Brother and Sister Gatlin for their care and concern during, during this time. I want to call our attention to this morning's scripture reading from the Old Testament. The psalm that deals with confidence in God. Psalm number 46. 
It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The kingdoms raised, the nations raised, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. The desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Our New Testament scripture coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 beginning with verse 13 and reading through to verse 18. And there Paul says we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written I believe and therefore I have spoken we also believe and therefore speak knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you for all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We come acknowledging your sovereignty in our lives. We also look to you for your grace and your mercy. God, even now, we begin by saying thank you. Thank you for the life of Joe Terry. Thank you for his family, for his friends. We thank you for all of those who he has touched. As we gather today, oh God, we pray that your spirit would come into this place, that you would touch each and every heart, each and every life, we pray, God, that you would draw us nearer to you for strength and for consolation. Bless his wife. Bless his family. We pray, God, that as we share today, they would be able to lean upon your strength, knowing that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can either ask or think, according to your power, which is at work in us. So work in us, God. Be with us. Lead us through this service. And indeed, O oh God, for the rest of our days. And we'll give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I'm going to ask uh, 
this this morning uh, for my regular Monday morning choir. Amen. Amen. And uh, you know, I'm I, I spent about four years in Mississippi. And, uh, Joe spent a lot of time in Tennessee, so we always talked about uh, those those times in the South. You, you sang, you didn't have an organ, a piano, a drum, a guitar, you had a wood floor, you could stomp. Amen. You could sing it. So we're going to sing this morning. Uh, I'm going to ask that those of us who are apart from the family, if you are able, if you will stand with me. We're just going to sing a verse or two of a hymn of blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Amen. Amen. And, and I know you're challenged again because in, in the time of COVID, we've gotten rid of all the hymn books and the Bibles and the keys. So if you don't know it, you just don't know it. Amen. <laughs> and if you know it, then join us in singing. All right. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All the day long, perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight, angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy. Whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting. Looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all all right with me? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> it's a good Monday morning choir. Listen, I'm trying to hold on. I, I, I call that the whosoever will choir. And I tried to hold that that melody, but I heard some harmonization over here. And I even heard some over here in the family. So, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Uh, God is, is a uh, At this time, we're going to uh, provide an opportunity for brief family uh, reflections. And so if you 
uh, would like to make reflections, I want to ask, first of all, that you to stand right where you are. I'd like to know how many of us are going to be making reflections. All right? All right? Yes, church family count. <laughs> Amen. All right, if you will, would you just come along this, this aisle and uh, one by one make your way to this podium. about four of us, all right? And I share this all the time. The reason I ask you to stand is because I've been, I've been uh, in the church long enough to know in these kind of services, folks don't have anything to say until somebody else get up and say something. And it triggers a memory, and before you know it, we're here all day long uh, because somebody, somebody else triggers something else. So we're going to let these four come and share it this time. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has prayed. We will rejoice and be glad. Mary, I stood on behalf of the Naomi Circle of the Mission of Lilydale First Baptist Church to encourage my sister Mary, who has been a faithful member, a good friend, and a great prayer partner, to let you know that God has you, that He loves you. He loved Joe more. But we know that weeping will endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Hold on to your faith as we hold on to you, Mary. We're going to hold on to you. Knowing that in time, those wounds will kind of ease. They won't heal. Been there, done that. They won't heal, but they will ease up. So just know that you love, your church family loves you. Your mission sisters care for you. And we're going to undergird you to hold your hands up at this time. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my Uncle Joe, amazing man. Yes. Yes. One of the things I will tell you, he also had an amazing wife. Has an amazing yes, wife, Mary. Yes, sir. We love you. Yeah. I stand before you, not absent of words, but full of words mm -hmm. that would take more than two minutes <laughs> to express. I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version of what Uncle Joe meant to this family. <laughs> Uh, loving wife, loving brothers, sisters, loving nieces and nephews, loving family, and loving friends. I will tell you that my uncle is the epitome. If you look uncle up in the dictionary, there'd be a five by seven glossy of Joe. <laughs> And I'm going to tell it like it is <laughs> today because he would always tell it like it was yeah, yeah. at family gatherings. Whenever we were out and about, he would make certain that everybody knew that he was representing the family. Yeah. So, Joe, today I'm representing the family <laughs> when I stand before this audience and tell you how loved you are, how much you'll be missed, mm -hmm. and how remiss I would be if I didn't say that if there's a such thing as glue, he's the glue, or part of the glue that holds our family together, that attracts friends. Yeah. So, you know, it, it says it said that it takes a lot of people to make a world. The reason that Joe has so many people that love him dearly, as evidenced here today, is because he was adhesive in personality. Mm -hmm. If you bumped into him, you stuck. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Yes, sir. absent more time, yeah. I am going to conclude that, and I've never had the ease of getting up before a group and talking in a bereavement situation mm -hmm. without breaking into tears. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm not breaking into tears is because I know Joe is sitting up there with the father looking and saying, I'm so happy to be here, Lord. <laughs> and they are happy that I made my transition and I'm with you. Yeah. So, so family, friends, we love you. Thank you for being here. And God rest your soul. Yeah. 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 
Good morning. Good morning. My name is John Long, and I want to say first honor to God, and also uh, family, Pam and I definitely will support you in any way you can. But I, my remarks uh, goes back to people, the church knows, but a number of people did not know that Joe was a warrior. Yeah. Joe was was one of those individuals that stood up for the rights of people and took in his hand with 20 some other uh, college uh, students, went in and set in in the days when you could get shot for sitting in in a southern restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I forgot if it was Walworth, I mean Wal Woolworth, <laughs> but that's what what I wanted to make sure that people really understood that he was a warrior. Yes. And then the other thing was that he loved his church. Yes. He worked yes. hard for his church. Yes. He and I worked together on the trustees board. Joe didn't say much, but we said, you listen. Yes. And also, we all remember, Joe was the keeper of the CDs. <laughs> 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 And uh, before we got into YouTube, whenever you need a uh, service, Joe was back there uh, turning out the disc. And I just want to say that we are here uh, to church, and I can say um, we come that the church will support you uh, in any ways possible. And so, peace be with you, Joe, and we'll be seeing you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So, first, my condolences from myself and my aunt's family. I had the pleasure of having Mrs. Terry for a seventh grade teacher. He eventually popped up in high school across mm -hmm. the street at Finger. And, of course, a fellow member of the church, like you said, the CDs. So, I've been going back there getting the tapes for $3. <laughs> <laughs> He was the perfect teacher, a wonderful friend. Like I to run into him and it was still the same, Mr. Terry. Mm. Never forgot me. Of course, never forgot my family. Mm. I talked a lot in his class. <laughs> it, it, to the point he even stopped telling on me on Sundays. <laughs> but he will be missed. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much uh, for those reflections. Uh, I, I, I got a little, uh, I was able to tie something together today. Uh, I forgot that Joe was in charge of all those CDs. <laughs> Amen. And I wondered why he came to church during this pandemic to record on Saturday. And nothing is in the CD, but Joe showed up every Saturday. He didn't have a responsibility of job. He had no CDs, but he was here every Saturday. And uh, I didn't want to ask him, you know, what, what you doing here? <laughs> but he showed up there, and that was it. That was part of that uh, that audio video program. And he was going to make sure, even if he didn't have nothing to do, he was going to be here. Uh, just in case. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for those reflections. Uh, this time I'm going to ask uh, Sister Leilani Howell. She will come at this time and read our resolutions as she's coming. We ask if there's anyone present who has a written resolution we have not sent to, to us here. All right. Good morning, family. Lilydale First Baptist Church Brotherhood Resolution for Brother Terry, Joe Terry. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes. So if you cross, if you if you seem to cross hard to bear, your cross is hard to bear, you know that what to do, the one who loves you the most, for all will be there to see you through. We are in the place in this world for a limited time. 
and with the breath of the infant begins the race of the grave, a race everyone must run. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of Brother Joe Terry. The Brotherhood Ministry of Lilydale First Baptist Church feels that it is befitting to express their sympathy to the family of Brother Joe Terry. We, we commend you to the Lord who knoweth best and will always do right. You will always have our sincere prayers. Whereas Brother Joe Terry was loved by his family and encouraged others to love as well, Brother Terry had a thirst for the Word of God as an attendee of the Bible study. He was a doer of God's Word by serving the Lord diligently for many years as a trustee within Lilydale First Baptist Church. He had the look of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, for shall change our vile body that it may fashion like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to even to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians 3.20 Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering the scriptures. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the suffering of Christ among us is uh, so our consolation also abideth by Christ. 2 Corinthians 1 through 3. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy will be kept in our church archives. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow and more importantly, we recognize that the loss is heaven's gain. Humbly submitted on the eighth day of November 2021, the Brotherhood of Lilydale First Baptist Church, Brother Darnell Glenn is the president, Reverend Dr. Alvin Love is the pastor. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you and my righteous right hand, Isaiah 41 and 10. Two, Joe Terry's loving wife, Mary, and his entire family. The trustees wish to extend our deepest sympathy for your loss, whereas brother Joe Terry was always willing to serve with any task that the board undertook. He was dedicated and faithful trustee who also served in the sound room during the recordings of our morning worship service. Whereas we lovingly thank Joe Terry for the service and truly, we truly miss his quiet spirit for his prayers that closed all of our meetings. Although his, our hearts are made heavy by the foreseen passing, we acknowledge that the Lord knows best in calling him to take his rest. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we, were, we will have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Therefore, at this difficult time, we bow in submission to God's will, remembering that he is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, and that he has not lifted our uh, comfortless, left us comfortless. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Be it therefore resolved by the life of Brother Joe Terry to uh, commend to God who is able to keep until the day of redemption. Be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy will remain in our permanent records. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. For Father's house, in my Father's house are many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I am going to there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to with, with me. And you also may be where I am. John 14, one through three, prayerfully, prayerfully submitted this eighth day of November, 
221, the trustee board of Lilydale First Baptist Church. Regina Calhoun is the trustee chairperson, Reverend Dr. Alvin Love, pastor. Resolution. Pastor Alvin Love and the entire Lilydale family extend our deepest sympathy to Sister Mary Terry and the entire bereaved family of Brother Joe Terry. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. The Lilydale Church family is mourning, you, mourning with you today. Brother Joe Terry is relieved from the troubles of this world and he is now in the tender loving care of the Heavenly Father where there is perfect peace. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Let it be resolved that Brother Joe Terry, a quiet Christian man, stood tall with a firm, um, um, unflawed dedication and faithfulness to God and his church. Therefore, we humble ourselves and submit to God's will. We thank God for the life of Brother Joe Terry, who was finally called the tape man and the fixed fun memories of him that will live in our hearts forever. Sister Mary, your beloved husband has moved up to a higher calling of the master. I will lift my eyes upon to the hills which come my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Let it be finally resolved that the Lilydale First Baptist Church family along with the deacon board, trustee board, and each auxiliary is holding you close to our hearts during this time of bereavement and we will assist you in any way possible. Humbly submitted on the behalf of the Lily Dell First Baptist Church, Reverend F. Dr. Alvin Love is the pastor, Sister Carol Connie is the church clerk. And just a brief thing, Mary, we used to meet all the time at Carson's. We're gonna have to find another place to go. Talk to you later, <laughs> bye bye, thank you. know that the family of Joe Terry greatly acknowledges and appreciates uh, all of the expressions of love shown to them during this time, the calls, the cards, the letters, the words uh, of encouragement during this time of bereavement. Most of all, thank you for your prayers. I want you to know that those will personally acknowledge Pause just for a moment of silence to give you a minute or two to reflect upon the life of Brother Joe Terry as we turn our attention to the obituary. We get an opportunity to read it silently if you've not already done so.
chapter 8. And I want to begin reading with verse 31 and conclude with verse 36. John chapter 8, beginning with verse 31. Then it says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abides forever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. For a few moments, as I reflect upon the life of, of the Doteri, I, I want to talk about essential freedom. Essential freedom. I, I come to this uh, idea uh, again. Uh, I thank Dr. Long for for bringing it to our attention. I come come to it because of the uh, knowledge that Joe shared with me, uh, indeed with our entire church, of his work in the civil rights movement. Uh, how he was a freedom fighter and how he was a freedom fighter and how he uh, was involved in the uh, lunch counter sit-ins in the 60s in the city of Nashville, Tennessee uh, as a attendee of Tennessee State University. I have some friends who were uh, there at the time as well. Some of them who went to American Baptist College uh, who were arrested as well uh, with Joe. And uh, he brought a news clip into church one day and showed it to me of all those, of those young people crammed into one cell because they were protesting and fighting against and sitting in against racial discrimination. Uh, sometimes we forget that there was a time where black folks couldn't sit at lunchroom counter, couldn't drink certain water fountains, you could not go to certain uh, restrooms, you could not uh, ride in the front of the bus. And, and Joe was one of those individuals who put his life on the line to try to break up an unjust system and bring freedom to his own people. I think sometimes we, we forget that a movement is always more than just one man. We remember Dr. Martin Luther King, and we remember those great names, but those great names would have no meaning without some foot soldiers, some young people who put their lives on the line for our freedom. And, and I, I was proud to know uh, that, that Joe Terry was a freedom fighter. Amen. Amen. He fought uh, racial discrimination in the South. And, but he didn't just fight racial discrimination in the South. He fought educational inequity in the North. Amen. Amen. As, a, as, a, as an educator with Chicago public school system uh, and, and as a, a high school teacher and then mentor at the Finger uh, High School across the street. Uh, 
Joe worked with me uh, as we pulled together community groups to, to say to those who were budgeting money for education that, that people of color don't have worse grades because they're not as smart as other folks. They, have, they may have worse grades because they don't have the same opportunity as other folks. Amen, amen. Listen, somebody said Joe told it just like it is, so can I just tell it like it is? <laughs> amen, that, that we discovered, that, and Joe was a part of that committee, that, that when you, you put a sixth grader uh, uh, of color in Minnesota and give him the same resources that the other people had, not only did he not do worse than them, the record reflected that they did better. Because the other folks have gotten complacent in the resources. And when you haven't had the opportunity and the door has been opened and you've been set free, you, you go further than those who have just gotten complacent in the system. And Joe fought for educational equity. He fought to set young people free. I remember when he retired from Chicago Public Schools and uh, uh, he didn't stay retired long because we were working here with a mentoring program and we discovered that there were some issues and the high school across the street and I asked for volunteers. I needed 10 people who would go across the street for half an hour once a week. Not only did Joe volunteer to become a, a mentor for half an hour, but he ended up staying at the high school and he was there five days a week, every day, helping young people break free from educational inequity. That, that's a freedom fight. Amen. It, it, it says to me that, that here is a man who understood the concept of essential freedom. What do I mean by that? Well, just because you got a little piece of change in your pocket, and just because you're able to live in a better neighborhood and drive a better car, doesn't mean that you are really free. Because none of us is truly free. Come on, help me. I hear somebody. Until all of us have been made free. Joe Terry was, was a fighter for freedom. He, he, wasn't, he didn't make a lot of noise. But he was involved in a lot of action. Amen. I had to watch Joe sometimes because sometimes I wish he'd make some noise. <laughs> because then I could, I could, you know, I could get, a, get ahead of him, Sister Regina, and preempt some of the stuff that he might do. I remember we bought the, the new property in Park Forest and the trustees uh, did a walkthrough all through there. And, and Joe, you know, usually he's investigating everything. He, he worked to fix stuff out there and get that building ready, uh, but investigated everything, but he didn't do a lot of talking. So you didn't know what he was working on. And I discovered one day that Joe walked through there and he saw that there was a, the, the, the building already had a safe in it. And the safe was open. And Joe went to this and said, oh, we got a safe. Closed the door, spun the tumbler, he said, anybody got the combination? <laughs> <laughs> but it was his inquisitive nature, always wanting to learn more, always wanting to be involved, always trying to raise the bar for those who are coming along behind him that made him special. He was a freedom fighter. And, and, and I think 
We ought to understand that, that freedom is not just external freedom and, and rights and privileges, where you can go and what you can eat and, and uh, how you can ride, but, but real freedom comes from the inside out. We, we have to know that we've been set free on the inside. And that's really what I loved about Joe Terry. That, that he understood that essential freedom comes to those who understand three things. You know, right here in this text. That essential freedom comes, and I guess all are preempted by saying, you don't really even look for freedom until you understand that you're currently in bondage. It, it, is, it is the fact that we are bound that makes us want to be free. Amen. Amen. If you don't know that you're in bondage, you know, that, that was the problem with, e with Israel and Egypt. They say it was better for us to die by the flesh pots of Egypt than to die in the wilderness. Listen, if you, if you die in the wilderness or in Egypt, it doesn't make a difference where. Right? The, the idea is that we didn't recognize that we were in bondage. When you know that you're in bondage, you, you cannot be satisfied with the status quo. And so, essential freedom comes from the knowledge, first of all, that our sin has been pardoned. Jesus says, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciple. And my truth, if you know it, will make you free. Understanding that, that we are in bondage to sin. When you read through that text, the, the, the leaders of, of the Jews said, we're Abraham's seed, we've never been in bondage. That wasn't true. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But they said it anyway, and Jesus said, simply said, listen, all of us are in bondage to sin. Uh, and, and listen, it's a sin to know that you've been created by God with certain unalienable rights and then to become satisfied where you are. It's a sin to take all of the bounty and the blessings that you are able to to, to experience today because of sacrifices of those who sat in at lunch counters and not pass the same kind of energy home and do something today to bring somebody else farther along. Whether we know it or not, we are in bondage. And, and so real freedom, essential freedom, comes from knowing that my sin is part. Jesus says, listen, when you're my disciple, my truth makes you free. I, I like the way John writes this because he didn't say my truth sets you free. Because when you're set free, you can always be caught again. Put, put, put a bird in the cage. You open the cage, he'll fly out. But if you catch him, you can put him back in the cage and hold him there. But when you've been made free, you are free indeed. There is no cage that can hold you. There is no captor that can catch you when you have been made free. Jesus says, you'll know my truth and my truth will make you. essential freedom is the knowledge that through Christ Jesus I have been made free. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I really don't have time to talk about this. I could talk about Joe Terry a long time. Amen. Amen. And, uh, but, but there were things in, in the course of our uh, experience together when Joe became aware something that he needed to change in his own life and in his own experience he had no problem coming to me and say Rev 
I need to talk to you about something. And, and he'd make a change right then and there because he understood that when you know God's truth, it makes you free. Second, second component, I believe, the text suggests <coughs> about essential freedom is not only the knowledge that sin is pardoned, but secondly, the understanding that death has been vanquished. That he says that the servant can abide uh, not in the house forever. That, that really is a reference that none of us came here to stay. Amen. This is a temporary house. None of us came here to stay. You can't abide here forever. But if you abide in the sun, the sun stays in the house forever. If you are in him, then you have the victory over death. Well, I, I, I think perhaps, I didn't know him then, but perhaps that was already in his nature. That, that Joe understood that even if I perish fighting for civil rights, that I understand that I have a place already prepared. That, that even though I may lose this temporary residency, I have a building not made with hand that is eternal in the heavens. So essential freedom comes from the understanding that sin has been pardoned. That secondly, Death has been vanquished. And, and then the third one really is just simply a combination of the two. Because when you know that your sin has been forgiven, and when you know that death has been conquered, you ought to live the rest of life with the understanding that we are all victorious. That when we are in Christ, that's why, and, and that's all in that one word that he says in verse number 36, indeed. He says, he who the Son of Man makes free is free indeed. <laughs> All right? He, he, he really puts that double entendre on it. He says, listen, if I make you free, you're free. No, no. It, it's more than that. If I make you free, you really free. No, come on. I was just, you just beat me to it. If God makes you free, you are sure enough free. If he makes you free, you are free indeed, which means that I have the victory over this world. I have the victory over sin. I have the victory over injustice. I have the victory over mistreatment. I have the victory over trials and tribulations. And I have the victory over this world. When this life is over, I will fly away. Yes. 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 Joe, Joe didn't linger. He didn't have. He didn't worry about you know, fighting to stay here, even though I know he wanted to stay here as much as he loved Mary. But when it came to that time for him to be set free, but Mary called me one morning and said he's going into intensive care, and, and before the next day came out, he was going to be with God. It is. That understanding that I have victory, not just in this life, but I have the kind of victory that takes me into the next life. And I don't know how you feel about it today, but that's, that's really the kind of, of, of freedom fighter I want to be. One who, who fights for freedom in this life, but who understands that, this, that there is more to life than what we see. It is that which we don't see that is important. And one of these days, if I know him, and if I believe his truth, he will set me free and I will be free indeed. So thank God for Joe Terry. He's been set free 
indeed. Listen, you, you do know that, uh, I know this is a, in, in theology, we call this an anthropomorphic moment, but that just means we use some human words to describe a God who is beyond humanity. And, and, and so I, I, I want to kind of throw this anthropomorphic picture at you, but if there was a lunch counter in heaven, <laughs> Listen, Joe is confidently walking his way to the front <laughs> and sitting down and, and said, feed me from your table. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. You got to worry about nobody keeping him from getting there because he trusted in God. And God has made him for you. God, how we love you, how we praise you. How we thank you for this life. We thank you for Brother Terry, for his experiences. We thank you, oh God, that he was one of those unsung heroes that helped to make all of us free. But God, we thank you most of all for his commitment to you. For he understood, as we all must understand that real freedom comes from you. Yes. So God, allow us to have our sins pardoned. Give us victory over death, even as you gave Jesus Christ the victory over death. That when we have to lay down these mortal frames, we know that we will rise again eternal in glory. Bless Sister Mary. Bless his family. Give him your peace and your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to make our way to the Evergreen Cemetery in just a few moments. I ask the Gap and staff if they will come. As we make ready, we're going to need a couple of flower bearers. You will come to give us a, a hand with the flower. I think we probably need about three. So, three flower bearers. You will come. We're going to serve as small bearers. If you will meet us uh, at the rear of the church now, if you will stand and go to the rear, you might be ready to perform your duties. got things kind of set up a little differently uh, here in the sanctuary because of COVID protocols. We're going to all proceed from the sanctuary. The family is going to go down the center aisle behind me. That will be these first three rows. Then once they have gone to the back, I uh, ask the rest of you would follow out uh, from the rear to the front. I'll be back on the outside aisles. Continue to pray for this family. We know that God is able to keep. Shall we stand?
once we you left the sanctuary, we asked you to direct which of your cars and the bright lights on to the gap and staff and know that you're traveling with them and they will speak again. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, there you will be. 